ladies, it's Julie Hamilton and Miss Doris Gentry. Woo! Yay! Are you so excited? Are I am. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm excited too. Good I'm... afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're here live in the studio. Julie yep. Hamilton, Napa, That's California. Right. I know. I told my friend we might have so much energy we might just like implode the room. Oh you yeah. Know? We might just well, be like employed the internet. Employed yeah. the internet. That's right. Well, listen. I am so excited to bring you this interview with Doris today. As you know, she is a powerhouse, positive person in our community. Yep. She is. And, you know, that's always our goal here on Life Builders is to bring you people who are making a positive difference in the world. Mm. And this lady, she is outspoken. She speaks her opinion, mm. but with kindness and respect for other people. I always admire that about you. Oh, like her posts you. are very positive and uplifting. And so sometimes, well, let me, let me, let me back up, but tell us just like in two minutes, tell us what you're doing now. What are you up to? Oh, right. Yeah. So, well, I mean, we've got Wednesdays, the 4th of July parade. <gasps> oh, right. I meant to mention that. Yes. yes. Are you uh, doing the announcing? It? Yes. Bob St. Laurent and I will be oh, doing, gosh. we'll be emceeing the parade. It'll be live on the radio the whole time. And we'll be announcing all the entries and the booths and the fun, 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 bling, bling stuff. And I uh, got the judges for the parade. Oh. And so we have wonderful VIP judges. So it'll be a big article in the nice. paper on Sunday. And um, so we've got that going on. And then after that, one of my other volunteer hats, since I change hats often, okay. is I'm the um, volunteer coordinator for Porch Fest. Oh, and Porch Fest is a so wonderful downtown venue yes. on all the porches in Old Town. We've oh. got like 90 Funny bands guys. or 60 bands. You know, they're playing on all these porches, all outdoors, all live. So and, cool. And you guys can walk great. between the houses. Yeah. It's like so fun. You get your little dog on a leash, whatever. <laughs> you know, people are just walking around, babies in strollers. Yep. And it's so precious, you know, all these big, beautiful mansions with their big front porches and their bands playing. Oh, so and it's fun. so fantastic. And so the um, center of the focus of Porch Fest is at Fuller Park. So, oh, okay. I didn't yeah, know that. so that's where all the food trucks will be and the water bottles and the. Um, you guys hearing this? But yeah. also the porta potties this year, we got the really big ones like. Because a lot of families, oh. you know, there's no way to, to change your baby. Oh. And, you know, and if you're using it, you don't want to leave your two-year-old outside. Yes, yes. So now with the family-style, handicap-style porta-potties, oh, yeah. they're more family-friendly. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah. Well, and I think she, you just got honored yesterday, right? I For did. her participation in the 4th of July parade yes. for how many years? Well, we had never had a 4th of July parade in, in Napa since like the 1970s. Oh, wow. So my Sunrise Rotary, yay, Sunrise <laughs> Rotary, woohoo! My Sunrise Rotary um, bit the bullet and said, we're going to fund this and we're going to sponsor this and we're going to bring back the 4th of July parade. Yes. And so I was the chair the very first year. Oh. And brought and created the parade from dust. You know, I felt like Adam and Eve. You know, when God just touched the <laughs> dust and boom, there was man. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, my Sunrise Rotary helped me, and we created the parade from dust, and we toured other cities, Vacaville, oh. Fairfield, Vallejo, to find out how do you do a parade. I mean, if you've never done a parade, where do you even start? Yeah. yeah. I don't how do you know. do a parade? How, I mean, do you make rules? Or, yeah. You know. So we learned all know. that, and we. And we sponsored and created the first parade. And then I chaired it for nine years. Oh, okay. And so this is my first year to not be chaired. I'm just trying to, oh, trying to you know, hand off. over the reins. And I'm like, oh, oh, are you really doing that over there? You know, kind of <laughs> want to look back. But it's just so fun. And oh. it's in capable hands. Michael Murray is the chair this year. And he's awesome. fabulous. He's oh. awesome. Yay, Mike Murray. Well, boom, last, boom. last Parade. We were sitting right down the road from the announcer booth, so we got to hear, hear you. everything. Yeah, it was yeah. really fun. So, hope you guys go to the Fourth of July parade. It's going to be really fun. Ten so, o'clock on Wednesday morning. Ten o'clock. Oh, okay, great. So Doris is a Napa City Council woman. Yes. And she's. If you looked at her biography, I was blown away by how much you've done, and I want to talk about all that. Oh. Just. Oh my gosh, so well, many things. Got, are we on here for two days? I know, or? exactly. <laughs> are, I mean, it's funny it's how like we talk about all the, things, all the things that I have done. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It was 
very long and impressive. But I do want to ask Doris about one specific thing. And that is like a lot of times when we are positive influences, mm. people often assume that it's because everything goes right in your life. So they mm. often assume it's because, you know, you had a great childhood and you're fine. Okay. Oh, so anyway, I was just saying when you put up the post on your birthday about your childhood, it kind of rocked me because I thought, wow, life must be great. Life must be amazing mm. to be such a positive person. So could you tell us, like, just give us a smidgen of your story? And I think it's going to bring hope to so many people. Well, you know, I think that, I think there was only, you know, I, again, I apologize for dropping out the God word because I'm a faith-based <laughs> person. So it just kind of... We don't mind. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> That's good to know because, um, because I think, there was only one perfect person, mm -hmm. and that was Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, so when parents look at the job they're doing as a parent, they see how short they are from perfect. Yes. Because we always measure ourselves by how together Susie looks right. or how together Miguel is over there yes. with his family of four perfect children. <laughs> You know, and so, so we think that our life is pale in comparison to others. And um, and so there is no perfect home, perfect family, and perfect person who came from a Leave It to Beaver household because yeah. Leave It to Beaver was a TV show. Yes. So, um, so given it's that, fake. it's fake. Yeah. And so given that, I would just say that, you know, I did come up through the mud. And um, I did come up through a broken life where my sister and I lived in about 30 different homes of out-of-home care. And not, not the traditional kind of foster care. It was more the dropped off and left places wow. or just full-on abandoned. And, um, you know, and I think it's really precious of God. I... Um, grew up through a lot of, of, of violence, of abuse, of abandonment, of, of torture and rape. Mm. And, um, but you know, it's really neat because God is so neat. Because God is put kind of a veil there. And I keep trying to peek backwards. Well, what happened to me at age eight? Well, what yeah. happened to me at age six? Well, where was I at age four? And God doesn't allow me to wow. see that ditch. And so much of the trauma, I mean, I might remember this single thing yeah. or that thing, but I don't remember a bucket full of things. Amazing. And a lot of it has come to light as an adult when I've gone to the hospital for injuries. So I was about 30 oh. and I was roller skating and I broke my, fell and broke my elbow, went to the hospital and the doctor's like, oh my gosh, you've broken your right arm many times. I'm like, no, I haven't. He's like, well, yes, you have. Look at this x-ray. Oh, and I'm wow. like, really? Wow. And you look at the x-ray, and it was broken here and broken here. He said, and, and some of these breaks, they weren't set right. They just oh, looks like gosh. somebody, you know, taped them up and kept you rolling. And so the wow. abuse manifest itself so then I start remembering oh that's right I remember having my arm in a sling when I was four I remember having my arm in a sling when I was seven I remember wow. having my arm taped down to my body with tape wow but I I didn't remember until I went to the hospital wow. and the doctor's talking about all my broken body parts wow. and another time I'd had a car accident and broke a rib and the doctor said oh my gosh you know, your ribs have been broken so many times. And I'm like, they have? <laughs> and the doctor's like, you mean you don't know? Wow. And I'm like, no, I didn't know that. And then I can remember being kicked in and being thrown against the wall. And so little pieces wow. came back to me. So the violence and the trauma of my childhood um, and my infancy, I would say, to a great extent, is masked over um, because God just says, you don't need 
that yesterday. Wow. Yesterday is old news, girlfriend. Come on. You need to come move on. on. Yes. You need to move into the future. You need to be present in today. You need to wow. let your joy radiate. And you I don't need it. it's like you take a shower and you wash the mud off. Yeah, yeah. You don't run down in the drain and say, Where did that mud go? Yes. Oh mud, come back to me. I want to remember <laughs> you. I want to touch you. I want to see you. That's a good word. You. Yes. I want to see you, Mr. Mud. Yes. God says no. You wash wow. that mud off and you keep on keeping on. So was yeah. it always like, did you, like when you're going through all of this and you're a child and, and some of it you don't remember, some of it you probably do, was it, did you always have this sense that you're moving towards something great? Well, I guess my other question is like, did you know God then? No, no not as didn't. a little child. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you didn't, did you have a sense of like something bigger than you, like pulling you to your purpose or just like, you were just like. I'm just walking this road and thrive. You know. I had I had a great sense to thrive, but I did have a great sense of God. And so, at one moment in my life, my sister and I lived with Grandma, and Grandma lived in Illinois. And so, one single moment, we lived in Illinois for one year. Okay. And so, I have to tell you about education. So that's a okay. rabbit I'll chase. So you bring me back to that. Okay. <laughs> but at this one moment, we lived with Grandma, and I was ten. And Grandma took us, was an old Southern Baptist, okay. and she took us to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, oh, Friday yeah. morning, <laughs> went to training union, Bible study, vacation Bible school, Bible camp. Every time the doors of the church oh, were open, yes. we were in there, yeah. right? But we loved it because it was the first time we sensed community. Mm. We knew all the same people every day. They were all... Wow smiling and happy wow they were love and joy yes. nobody hurt us nobody pushed us everybody said oh oh come let me tie your shoe oh come come let me wow. and so it was my first time to experience and embrace that kind of intense acceptance wow and where does our acceptance come from yes. God God is accepting us every single day wow. so that church was accepting these two dirty little orphan children every single day. And well, we weren't dirty little children, but we were bathed, yeah. you know. But I mean, we were grandma and everybody knew we were little orphans. Yeah, yeah. And so um, wow. I came to know the Lord there at age 10 in vacation Bible school. Well, then life took twists and turns and twists and turns. And, um, you know, I had a bunch more horrible things happen to me and run away and, and wow. things like that. But, but God was always there. So I'll tell you a quick, interesting story. Okay. So we like I know stories. we have like this whole, whole oh, page I, of questions. I'm like, I don't think we're going to get to these. <laughs> okay. So, um, so one time I had been drugged. I was a runaway and I was living in the streets of, Los, of Hollywood. And um, I had been drugged and taken up into this apartment. And when I came to and came aware, I was tied. My hands tied behind my back. Mm -hmm. And my feet were not tied, and I was not tied to the chair. Shame on the bad guy, because he didn't think to tie mm. me to the chair. He just tied my hands to my back. And I came to, and he was sitting on his knees in front of me with a knife. And I remember how scraggly he was, and he had, I remember he had tuna breath. I didn't eat tuna for 20 years wow. after that day. I remember yeah. he smelled like, well, he smelled like fish. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he yeah. smelled like fish. Yeah. And to this day, I don't like you know, the smell of like sure. fish markets and that sort of thing. Yeah. So anyway, I remember he smelled like fish and I remember he had decayed like teeth. I remember that because he's right in my face. And he was telling me all the things he was going to do to me as he's taking this knife and my hands were behind my back and he's popping all the buttons off my shirt. Now to this day, wow. I'm 60 years old. I rarely ever wear a shirt with buttons. Wow. <laughs> I wear a t-shirt. Isn't that ridiculous? It's no, so it's ridiculous. not ridiculous. It's, it's like, actually... Fabius, Fabius said, never go away. But anyway, he's popping the buttons and telling me these dastardly things he's going to do to me. Yeah. And um, I'm coming out of being drugged, so I'm not like you know, really comprehending. I wasn't afraid. I had zero fear. I'm just kind of coming to and hearing what he's gonna say. Wow. And I remember his look and his silhouette as he's on the floor in front of me and the big knife to this day, I don't use knives. Wow. Um, 
and we're in this empty apartment. It was a hot day in the summertime in Hollywood and all the windows were open. And at that moment, I didn't know we were on the third floor because I, I didn't know. And all of a sudden, someone's banging at the door. This is a dead true story. Banging at the door, yelling, Mo, Mo, are you in there? The guy pauses. Now we're in a completely empty apartment. Wow. The guy pauses, he turns, he stands up and he goes to the door and he goes, who's there? In that fleeting second, I was able to stand up, bolt from my chair and go head first out the window, right? Now, I did not know I was on the third floor, oh. but you know what was so cool about it? I tell you what was so cool. God. <laughs> Let me recover from that for a moment. Okay, okay, go God ahead. God <laughs> had a canvas awning over the downstairs entry of the apartment building. What? That I landed on and I tumbled off of the canvas awning because I went head first. My hands are behind my back. I went head first. I tumbled ever so gently, just like in the hands of cotton, from the canvas awning into the bushes that gently tumbled me onto the sidewalk. I was able to pull my handcuffed, my tied up hands under my legs like this and take off running down the street. Oh my gosh, he was protecting you. Was that not angels banging on the Holy door? Cow. Because to this day, <laughs> that, was, from that. that was angels banging on the door because wow. it was an empty apartment. Who was there? Wow. Who was there? It was mm. the angels banging on the door, Whew. giving me that one minute to escape. Wow. And, and I had so many um, encounters just like that wow. during those um, months that I was a runaway and that I was on my own, where yeah. God was just taking care of me and protecting me. And it was, it was just a really, it was really amazing. Wow. So when you look back at your life now with the purpose that he's put on your life and, and the lives that you're changing, I mean, like being a foster mom to over a hundred kids, I read, you know, I mean, did you, do you look back and you think like, wow, God was saving my life for something, you know, like he knew it wasn't your time to, to be gone yet. You yeah. Know? You know, I never, I don't think I ever thought of it like that. Yeah. Really. I just really kind of just take each day yeah. one day ahead. You Amazing. know, I, I've helped a lot of kids and I wanted, I wanted to be a foster mom because I wanted to create the kind of foster home that I never got to live in. Oh. I want to create the kind of house where that they can just go get a glass of milk or go have a bowl of cereal and you don't have to ask and beg yeah. and wonder, can I do this, you know? And I wanted to create the kind of home that, um, that epitomized that kind of loving, nurturing yes. um, kindness. Wow, and how was being a foster mom for you? I know a lot of foster moms that are working through it right now, and how, how was it that experience for you? Well, it's wonderful. I mean, you get kids and they're, um, they're angry and they're hostile when they arrive in our home. They don't want to be there. They didn't, they didn't ask to come to 222 Monroe Street. Oh, that's a cute little house right there with the yellow um, awning. They didn't ask right. to come here. Right, right, They right. just got shoved into our house. Yeah. So, of course, they're ornery and they're frustrated and they're, they're angry, you know. Um, so, we have to um, love and nurture them and let them know that they landed in a safe place and meet them with smiles and uh, give them wow. space and allow them to adjust and uh, they uh, eventually come around. Wow, and do you have any foster children? Are they still mostly in contact with you? Oh, or? absolutely. Oh, oh my gosh, the amazing. kids come back at Father's Day, oh. Mother's Day, Christmas. They'll That's come awesome. back when they've had their firstborn and they'll show us their baby. Um, I, I love this story, I'll tell you this quick story. So I got so many foster kids stories. So we had teen boys, we always take teen boys. Mm -hmm. And mostly we had four to six boys at the same time. So I Ooh. wanted to take I wanted to take the boys to um, Disney on Ice. Okay. So we get to Oakland to the um, big arena in Oakland. Uh, I've got all the boys in the car. We've got six boys. Hubby's driving. Okay. We've got six boys in the car. We get in the parking lot, and all you see, as far as you can see, is mommies 
holding the hand of three-year-old toddlers okay. in tutus. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Pink tutus, tiaras on their yes. head as they're going to Disney on us. Disney princess. Did they are? Yeah, okay. My boys, what did you bring us to? I'm not getting out of this car. What? I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you could have set off a 4th of July firework in my back car, that's what it was like. It was just oh, this no. cacophony of just yes. hate and venom and piss and anger and frustration and, and, and trickery. Yes. So they just went on and on. And my husband's just looking at me. He looks at me like, because of course he's kind of agreeing with them, you know. <laughs> like, why did you bring me here? Yeah, I'd much rather be at a baseball game. Or can we just leave this and go to the beach? And I don't care that you already bought the tickets. Yes. Let's go. He's not saying a word, but he's looking at me in that husband yes. tone. Yes. Wanting to Very agree. Very familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I listened to it pretty soon. I turned around and face the back of the truck in my most firm voice, which I'd, I never scream at the kids, but in my most firm voice, I said, you listen to me right now. Have any of you been to Disney on Ice? Mm -mm. I said, it is a rite of passage. I am so sorry that your mother <laughs> didn't take you when you were three or four or five, but Every child has been to Disney on Ice. Now you get out of this truck because you are going now. Do you hear me? So they opened the door and they all got out. They pulled their hoods up over their head. They cinched, they did. They cinched down the drawstring. They humped over like that. And we all went into Disney on Ice. So we had front row. We always buy front row for them, like up on the balcony, the mm -hmm. first row. The husband and I always sit in the row immediately behind okay. him. Okay. Because that's how we keep an eye on our... Good idea. On our tribe. Okay. And so they were just hiding and cow down. Well, the minute the lights went down and the first character comes out on ice skates, you could see him sit up. And pretty soon, they took their hood off. Pretty soon, they took their jacket Aww. off. And by about 15 minutes into it, they're leaning forward on the railing, enraptured in every square inch of the art that was presented before them, wow. where they had never been to live art oh. or live theater or anything like that. Wow. And the music was playing and the skaters <laughs> are skating and they were enraptured by it. Wow. So intermission comes, jackets come on, hoods come up, and they crawl back down the hole. Yeah. So Hubby goes, he buys food for everybody, he comes back, he's got hot dogs everywhere, and then the lights go down, and they're back on the railing in Rapture. So when the whole thing's over, we leave, they go, well, that wasn't that bad, and the other guys, <laughs> well, well, that's pretty lame. <laughs> don't ever do that to me again. I Don't ever, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so fast forward 10 years. Okay. 10 years passes, or I don't know, maybe it was seven, maybe it was 11, but many years pass and my doorbell rings and there's a man at my door. And this man, I had to think, I assumed he was one of my former foster kids, you know, and he says, look, and he shows me his ticket stubs for Disney on Ice. And he says, I've got something to show you. And he yells to the car, Becky, Becky, you know, and she comes bounding up with this little three-year-old in a pink tutu with a prince, ah, is he crying? With a princess oh. tiara on. And he said, I remember, Mom, you told me it's a rite of passage. Oh my gosh. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And I'm thinking, you know, what do we do in foster care? We train up a child in the way that they should go, whether they're our birth child or just a temporary child yeah. living in our house. Mm -hmm. And we and we train them in righteous living and a healthy lifestyle. And wow. there he stands with the little three-year-old in a pink tutu with oh a tiara. Oh my gosh, yes. that's amazing. Wow. Well, it's like so much more than that that you gave to him, not just Disney on ice, but yeah. you know, all those things that you that you taught and shared and opened their hearts to. Yeah. Well, let's, um, I want to Hi, everybody. Yay. Woo. <laughs>
Um, all right, so if, I know we get, we gotta keep moving on time because we don't have very much time left, but I do okay. wanna ask you a final question. I have so much more we can, we can talk like forever. Oh, I, I wanna tell you about oh, education. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I wanna tell you that, you know, because of the way I grew up, I never um, got to go to school. And so um, I uh, went to, you know, well, I never went to kindergarten. I went to a little bit of first grade, a little bit of, you know, like third, third grade. It went from all of fourth grade. And then, you know, sporadic after that, a little bit of um, seventh or eighth grade and a little bit of ninth grade. And that was it. Really? Yeah. So that was another, wow. you know, people always assume because I'm, I'm you know, pretty well spoken yeah. and well read and, you know, I appear intelligent. It's a joke. <laughs> I'm not smart. I'm dumb. What? No, I have not accepted I'm not, that. I'm not dumb. No. I'm not dumb, but you know, but I'm not. Um, you know, I have no big credentials and alphabets behind well, me. Well, but if you look at your record, you've been a teacher. You've been a CEO. You've run for a California assembly. I mean, like you look at all of these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That God has given you such favor and promotion to those places. Yeah, even, yeah. You know, if you didn't have enough. You know, and that's the thing. God does. He wow. picks us up out of the dust and shakes us off and <gasps> sets our feet on high places and tells us to march. So the difference mm. between me and the person next door that's sitting on their couch, eating bonbons, watching TV, you know, the difference between the two of us is I get up and go. Mm, that's you know, good. and that's really the Simple. difference. You know, Simple. get up and, and just get her done. My license plate, get her done. Just get her done. <laughs> just keep on keeping on. Truck along. You you break your leg and you're stuck at home while there's still the computer. There's blogs to write. There's stories to yes. tell. There's work to do. Yes. There's always work to well, do. Well, I love that's her hashtag, get her done Napa. Yeah, I love get her that. Done. We're going to have to hashtag this. So, my mm -hmm. question, or our last question is okay. if you could leave our viewers with one thing from today, what would you want them to take away from this you know, short time that we've had together? What, what do you want them to walk away with? What would you say to them? Well, you know, I, I'd say that, um, that life is never wasted, that all life matters, you know. Uh, people sometimes look down on or frown upon a poor person, mm. I was one, or homeless person, I was one, or barefoot child, I was one. You know, a child that's uneducated and not in school, I was one. You know, and so to remember that there's always hope and mm. there's always a way to, to give a person a shower and a haircut and help stand their feet strong and send them on a new path. And so there's no throwaway people and there's no throwaway kids. If you if you bathe people with um, love and kindness and certainly the passion for the Lord, the passion to love Jesus and to love others as themselves, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when you can instill that inside of somebody, it will make all the difference in the world. Wow. So I believe, I believe in mankind. I, you know, and I believe in our future. You know, oh my gosh, I'm on my soapbox now. When you talk <laughs> about kids, yeah, because when you talk about kids, you know, a lot of people go, oh my gosh, there's no hope for our future. Our America's going to hell in a handbasket. Yes, you know, yes. it's not. I mean, I work out on the college. I've worked in the wow. call for the college 20 years. I'm oh, on wow. the campus every single day at the college. Well, not every day. I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But <laughs> three days a week, uh, I'm at the college. And I'm going to tell you, if there was ever excitement for our future, it's now. Our wow. kids are invested and they're energetic and they're visionaries and they have hope and they yes. believe they're going to solve all the problems and they're, That's true. and they're polite and they're respectful. And sure, you find a few crazies down here trying to block the entrance to a building <laughs> in Portland or a few people over here picketing. But you know, they're, they're expressing their verbal beliefs yeah. and their rights and as long as they're not violent yeah that's well and that's what we i love about millennials they are they are all about justice like yeah. if you notice they are all about justice and they also 
aren't afraid to question the way that we've been oh, doing things because they don't they don't want to do it just because we've always done it that way. They want to yeah. ask the questions, right. and I love that about yeah. them. They're like, wait a minute, let's look at this and see, is this good? Is Absolutely. this, you know? So we have great hope for the future of America yes. because our kids are, are just sparkly and bright and optimistic, yes. and, they, and, and they're certainly more healthy than we were because oh, the yeah. mindset of, Healthy sure. living, healthy lifestyle, you know, 10-year-olds. Well, what's, you know, let's look at the ingredients <laughs> on this, you know. <laughs> They're not putting on baby oil to fry in the sun and eating, like, like Cheetos. Like and I did. laying on tin <laughs> foil. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yes, laying on tin foil. <laughs> I used to go uh, to this resort in Palm Springs, and they have these huge mirrors, kind of like that you would use in movie studios. Uh -huh huge mirrors and the tin foil was on the Oof. chase lounges with oh, tin foil man. and you would slather down in these pumps of baby oil and the yes. mirrors would just magnify the intensity on the sun so oh, you could get gosh. your tan twice as fast oh my gosh hopefully they're smarter than us way yeah. smarter than us way but. smarter well thank you for joining us so much yes. if you have any questions for doris go ahead and leave them in the comments and i'll be sharing this on my page too so everybody there can watch it mm -hmm. and be listening for it in the podcast coming up so i will see you guys on monday at 8 30 for our next live video and i hope you have an amazing weekend go live your big amazing beautiful lives we love you Yay. Woo. bye